Good evening, everybody, and welcome to round five of the Sim Racing Team Challenge. It's the Blue Cup 2009. My name is Mark Warmington, and I will be standing in tonight for Eckhart von Glan. Tonight, Eckhart will be trading in his microphone for a pair of racing boots and a helmet. Joining me in the booth tonight uh, will be co-commentators Andreas Holprun. Good evening, Andreas. Good evening, Mark. We also have on camera Jose Estrada doing his fantastic work. Good evening, Jose. Good evening, Mark. Mikhail Helen will also be with us in the booth tonight. Um, Mikhail will be watching the action as well. Um, Mikhail, are you there? Don't think so. <laughs> I think Mikhail's gone to find himself a beer already. Well, for anyone who is new to the STC, allow me to extend a warm welcome on behalf of all the teams, the admins, our sponsors, and our service providers. Um, Sim Racing Team Challenge is a team-based championship that brings together a select group of sim racing teams who all share in a common goal and vision. That's to have fun, race clean, and the pursuit of a racing experience where the success of the team overrides any individual goals or glory. We run two classes in our championship, um, that's the GT Pro and the GT Sport. Last time out, if you were with us, you would have seen Martin Skipchek racing for Roaring Pipes Maniacs take the win and pole in the GT Pro category back at Donington. Tonight, though, the action sees the STC Circus set up camp in the Prenois region of France. That's just outside Dijon. This is the Team GG designated home track for 2009. And it's a 3.8-kilometer track that was basically um, opened in 1972. Formula One has raced there on a number of occasions, but tonight it's going to be the Sim Racing Team Challenge bringing you all of the action. For those of you who have been following the championship, you will know that the Roaring Pipes Maniacs are currently heading the table with 311 points. They're closely followed by GMT DH Racing, who have 296 points. Flat Out Club are following up with 239 points. And then it's the Black Rebels heading a small gaggle in the middle with 218 points. Black Visor Motorsports are three points behind them on 215. And then you have Blue Flag Racing, my team, with 128 points. A one-point lead over Flat Out Junior, who have 127. And then Team GG, tonight's hosts, have 124 points in the table. DHR Fanatec have 111. And then A&E Racing on 83. Head up the Daniel Motorsports Virtual on 24 points. So thank you to everybody who's tuned in for tonight. We hope that the action will be gripping, enthralling, and that there'll be no, no hiccups along the way. Qualifying has just finished, and for those of you who'd like a rundown, we have... In pole position, Vincent Stahl, driving the Marcus Marcarelli for GMT DHR, he set an absolutely blistering time of 1 minute 16.794 seconds. Joining him on the front row of the grid will be Theo Bubacek for GMT DHR. So that's a GMT DHR lockout of the first two positions. His time was 1 minute 17.047 seconds. Mike Simeon for Flat Out Racing is on a 117.175 in third, followed by his teammate Kevin Clark on a 117.414. Rami Calcola in the Sunred SR21, is driving for Roaring Pipes Maniacs and put in a time of 1.17.493 seconds for the fifth place on the grid. Dave Nickel, the first of the um, Corvette C6 on the grid, put in a time of 1 minute 17.805 seconds. He's just ahead of Yari Vinari in another Sunred SR21 for Roaring Pipes Maniacs on a 1 minute 17.858. In 8th place, we have Bjorn Ellefsen driving again a Corvette C6 in a 117.887. Closely behind him, Mike Wrightson driving a Mosler for DHR Fanatec on 1, point, 1 minute 17.888. That's the closest we have on the grid because um, David Garcia follows up for uh, 117.9, just ahead of Thomas Brevitz in a 117.978. But driving flat out is on a 118.262 and then Christoph Babich, the first of the blue flag racers on a 118.759 
Richard Dayton, driving for Flat Out, is on a 118.863. With Neil Court for Black Pfizer Motorsport on a 119.473. Max Cholet, the first of the Team GG drivers in the BMW M3, is on a 1 minute 20.098. With his teammate Jeremy Trotin, again in a BMW M3, on a 1 minute 20.232. Eckhart von Glenn, the second of the Blue Flag Racers, and your normal friendly voice, is on 1 minute 20.326, with Michael Herman driving for Pfizer Motorsports on a 1 minute 20.518. Ryan Mortimer for DHR Fanatec is on a 1 minute 21.141, and then the last driver to put in a time was Dirk Bertram for a &E Racing on a 121.953. Darren Gardner, is making the back of the grid at the moment and was unable to set a time in the Super Bowl. So that's your grid for tonight's race. And Andreas, is there any surprises that you see there? Uh, no, I don't think so. Well, that's what we have for tonight. Andreas has no surprises. I'm hoping to see an absolutely imploring race for, for tonight. Um, so far in the Sim Racing Team Challenge, we've had some extremely close race racing. Um, Andreas, I hear that there was a little bit of interest that took place on the grid at Donington last race out. Um, would you care to comment? Uh, a bit later. I'm driving the safety car right now. Okay, I'll leave Andreas alone. He's currently leading around the grid. Um, we are at Dijon, and Dijon is, as, as, as we said, it's a little region outside of France. Now, I'm going to apologize to all of our French speakers tonight, as I absolutely butcher the French language. As we come round of the Corbe de Pua, which is um, turn eight, the drivers will go down the Strait de la Fuen into turn one, um, the Villeroy, then into the Essies at Savalier, turn two, and then it's Bretel for turns three, the Parabolica of turn four, and then Della Bretel for turn five, Corbe de Gorge Giolis, sorry, for turn six, and then it's going to be Virage de la Cour, turn seven, and then again turn eight, Corbe de Cour for turn eight. So, as the action starts, we see the two drivers in the Marcus Marcarelli, Vincent Stahl taking the lead into turn one. It looks like a pretty clean start. The safety car has taken to the pit lane, and we are racing. Um, this is a pretty tight track, and um, the drivers have already been commentating that they think it's going to be a race where consistency plays out rather than raw speed. The track has a lot of dust offline, so any drivers ticking two wheels outside the white line are going to find that they're going to take an interesting trip into the kitty litter. So as we wait for Andres to park up the safety car, we're just going to follow around Vincent Stahl, who is leading what I think is his first race this year in the Blue Cup. Um, and it's another name who is now putting himself on the grid with one of those alien times. I mean, his qualifying lap was in a completely different second bracket to anybody else on the grid. And it just seems that time and time again, we keep finding alien drivers taking up presence in the STC. For us mere mortals who like to watch them come around the track, it's an experience and an education to see how these drivers can apply such skillful dedication to their task. So, Andreas, have you made, managed to make it back into the booth yet, or are you still in the pit lane? No, I have managed to make, it, make myself back in the booth. Any observations for you about the condition of the track tonight, as you did the unfraid lap for us? Uh, no, it's, uh, it looks good. Uh, nothing to, uh, special to comment on. Although I have uh, one comment to make. Um, it seems like the Nicole has ended the race, sadly for the Black Rebel. Yep, um, we have Dave Nichols um, in sixth place as I'm um, looking on live timing. Um, Vincent Stoll for GMT DHR um, is currently still leading the race. He's pulled out something like a two-tenths gap on his teammate, Theo Ubicic. Um I fully expect that GMT DHR see tonight's race as a perfect opportunity to try and make up some ground in the championship standings. As we said earlier in the introduction, um, the Sim Racing Team Challenge is all about the team. It's not about the individual drivers. So through all of the rounds we've had so far this year, we've had some quite remarkable individual performances from each driver that has managed to take a win. 
but the most important aspect has been that they've put points on the board for their team. So as we see Vincent stretch out his lead as he goes into lap two of this fantastic race, um, I wonder whether or not the Roaring Pipes maniacs have some sort of tactic in hand to make up some of this ground during the race, or whether this is just going to be damage limitations. Um, at the moment, um, Vincent seems to be in control. We seem to have some nice racing going on through the grid. Um, I don't think we've lost a driver yet, which is always good. The more drivers that we have finished the race, the better. So, Jose, who is it that we're following at the moment? Are we still following Vincent? Yes, we are following Vincent, but I think we can do one of our classics uh, um, from to back of the week to, to check how uh, all the, the drivers are performing in these test laps. Thank you very much. You read my mind. So whenever you're ready, um, if we can do a march through the grid to make sure that all of our teams get some exposure and so that all of the team members who are sitting at home watching the race can see how their drivers are doing. So second place, we have Theo Gubitic, um, driving, as we said, for the GMT DHR and the Marcus Marcarelli. If we move on into third place, we should find Mike Simeon, driving another Marcus Marcarelli for flat out. Um, in fourth place, Kevin Clark, with the fourth Marcus Marcarelli in the top five, again for flat out racing, followed by Rami Kapula, driving the Sun Red SR21 for the Roaring Pipes Maniacs. We then have Dave Nickel in 6th place in the Corvette C6 GT2, followed um, by... No, uh, the, 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 sorry, uh, Mark, uh, Dave Nickel had a, a problem. He, he went to, to the pitch uh, right before the, the race started, so he's, he's not with us. You're absolutely right. I uh, just need to give my lifetime in a kick. Um, we actually have Bjorn Ellison in sixth position, just ahead of Yari Benari, who is now position seventh. My mistake, my apologies there. If we move on then into position eight, that's where we see David Garcia, who's behind the wheel tonight, rather than in the booth with us. In position nine, we have Mike Wrightson. Um, position 10, is Thomas Brevet driving again in another Corvette C6 GT2. If we move on into position 11, that's Brian Stark again in the Marcus Marcarelli driving for a flat out. And following up in position 12 is Richard Dayton again, the second flat out driver in the top 15. Moving on into position 13. We have Michael Herman. Michael Herman, who's currently just dropped off a little bit from Richard Dayton. Um, he's now following him through turns, um, trying to make up through the switchback a little bit of ground. If we move on to position 14, we find ourselves following Ryan Mortimer. Behind Ryan in position 15 is Jeremy Trotin, the first of our Team GG drivers for tonight, who is closely followed by his teammate, if I'm not mistaken, in a close gaggle of cars. It's Christoph Babish for Blue Flag Racing, actually in the mix there now. In position 17, Neil Gort. Position 18, Eckhart von Glan, your friendly voice, who should be commentating tonight, but as you can see, just couldn't resist getting behind the wheel of the blue flag racing BMW M3. Behind Eckhart in position 19 is Dirk Bertram and Dirk looks like he wants to get on terms with Eckhart. Um, Eckhart is doing quite a good job of holding him up behind him but I think Dirk wants to get past that any time soon. In position 20th we have Darren Gardner for A&E Racing and then position 21 um, unfortunately, we already have our first retirement of the night, Maxence Cholet. Um, unfortunately, that means we're already down one car. Um, if we then move back to the front of the grid, I think we should see that Vincent Stahl should still be our leader. Yes, he is. So, Vincent in the Marcus Marcarelli.
Okay, looks like the closest battle we have on track at the moment is position four and five. Rami Kapuna for Roy Pipes Maniac, being followed closely by Kevin Clark for Flat Out. There's only a difference of 0.5 seconds at the moment as we see them cross the grid. Now, coming into turn one is a potential overtaking position, but you really do have to rely on the driver in front, A, seeing the move, and then being willing to allow them to pass your car from the inside. The following corners as we go through um, the S's at Savalier is a little difficult to make a pass here because the cars are continually loaded as you move the G um, laterally from left to right. And coming to Gorge de la Bretel, turn three, um, it's an opportunity for Kevin to close up behind Rami Kakula and see if he can draft him up into the Parabolica. Up here you find the car usually gets a little light and so the drivers have to play around on the throttle to see if they can actually get the drive out of the turns into the double left-handers of Della Bretel. Here we see Kevin still staying on terms of Rami Kalkula and Rami Kalkula is no slouch behind the wheel so for Kevin Clark to be so close in the Marcus Marcarelli, Kevin really has to be on it tonight as we see him using all of the rumple strip available to him coming around to turn 8 to come down the start finish straight we should see now whether Kevin Clark in the Marcus Marcarelli has got a setup on the car that will allow him to out drag Rami Kalkula in the sunrid down the straight now we know from previous experience that the Sunred is a little bit of a lively car through the turns. However, it appears that when it comes to straight line speed, it is no slouch whatsoever. Now these drivers are on lap seven. That's a bit early into what's going to be a 90 minute race. And already they're driving as though they're in a sprint race. Now, Andreas, have you done many laps around Prenoir to Jean tonight? Or have you just done enough to take the safety car around? Uh, only, only the uh, pace, uh, uh, the pace lap. <laughs> but uh, it seems like a fast and flowing track, so it's difficult to pass. I think, as you, as you said uh, before, turn one is one potential uh, passing corner, and as well as uh, Petit Lecombe, maybe, and uh, uh, and the double Gosh de la Bretel. <laughs> Probably said that wrong. <laughs> Hey, don't worry about it. I'm quite sure that your pronunciation is much better than mine. For the rest of the evening, I think I might just stick to one, two, three, four, and eight um, for the turns. Um, when you say that um, Dijon is a flowing track, though, um, you're absolutely right. I believe when they first built the track in 1972, um, the Formula One cars could do a lap in under 60 seconds. It wasn't until they got to, I think, 1975 that they thought that's a little bit too fast and they built a little bit of an extension on to lengthen the circuit. That's what brings it up to its current day configuration of 3.8 kilometers. And I think it actually did what you see a lot of the FIA's activities um, slow the track down, make them safe for the drivers. So tonight, you're right, it's a nice and flowing track. Um, the lap times we've seen around the 1 minute 17s at the front and the 1 minute 21s towards the rear of the grid. But the drivers are going to have to have the perfect line. They're going to have the perfect um, drive out of the corners to actually make the pass work. I mean, we're looking at positions um, 7, 8, 9 and 10. And those drivers are covered by less than two seconds, I believe. Other than second and third, that is the closest battle that we have on track. Um, I've only seen on the live timing one pass for, for position so far tonight, and that has been Christoph Babiche taking Ryan Mortimer um, for 17th position. Up front, it appears to be a uh, follow my lead. Um, Vincent Stahl is definitely setting the pace out there. He's doing laps of about a second a lap faster than Tio Rubicic in second, and has managed to extend his lead out to 3.8 seconds, nine laps into the race. So as we follow David Garcia, who's having an absolute blast by the looks of it behind the, the, the wheel tonight, um, I think that we should see a very interesting race for tonight. I'm not sure whether or not Vincent Stoll is on a light light fuel load. Um, I would doubt that very much because we've seen so far this year that the fast drivers are just fast. But if he isn't on a fuel load, fuel load which is lighter than the cars in second and third, we may already know who the fitter will be for tonight. Um, and it looks like GMT DHR have done their homework on the Team GG track and are actually planning on running away with the points. So, 
Jose, um, I believe we're following David Garcia still, is that correct? Yes, we are, we are following my, my teammate and uh, co-organizator of, of this uh, challenge because uh, he was attacking uh, Jari uh, very, very, very insistent and uh, Jari is a very fast driver so that means uh, David is, is doing a, a great job with, uh, with the Corvette. Yeah, he's doing an absolutely amazing job because, as you said, Yari Nari is probably one of the fast drivers that we have in the STC. Um, and at the moment, David Garcia is less than one second behind him. Um, as we look at the live feed, we can see that the four drivers who are fighting over 7th, 8th, 9th and 10th are really trying to get the measure of each other. Um, there's no quarter being given. David Garcia right now is right up behind Yari Vinari. Um, I'm not quite sure where he's expecting to make a move as he goes through the um, Roche de la Bretel. Um, as he approaches the Parabolica, it may be a case of slipping one up on the inside. But as we've said earlier tonight, one inch off line could be enough to wreck your race. So, Potentially, it could just be a case of patience. We're only 20 minutes into this race, so we still have over an hour to go. Um, David doesn't really have to do anything interesting. He doesn't have to do anything risky. As we've said already, it's all about the team points. It's not about the driver going to glory or anything of some sort of personal objective. So I think you can be proud of your, your illustrious teammates, and as you said, one of the founding members of the STC. Um, let's talk about that for a little. I mean, the Sim Racing Team Challenge is, is one of the more novel concepts that you can find in online racing. Um, most championships that you see are all about drivers going for a driver's championship, or potentially, yes, there is a team element as well. But the Sim Racing Team Challenge has no, no, let me repeat, has absolutely no prizes for individual drivers. The drivers just sacrifice their time, they dedicate their, 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 their personal lives to actually driving their teams forward. One way to ensure that the Sim Racing Team Challenge is all about the teams and not the drivers is also the fact that one driver cannot race in more than six events in any one season. If they do, they then have to drive through the pit lane at the start of the race for the next event. So from their seventh race onwards, they pretty much have to handicap themselves for the entire race. And I believe we only have one driver at the moment who's rapidly approached that sixth race already and will have to start through the pit lane for the next race. David Garcia at the moment is trying really, really hard. Um, I see he's just had an off-track moment. However, he's managed to gather the car back up, get it back on track, and hasn't even lost the position to Mike Wrightson, who must be smelling blood because he's now 0.3 seconds behind David and it's things like that isn't it Andreas anytime you see a driver go off track anytime you see that the driver may have lost concentration it gives you a little bit of an adrenaline rush and pretty much says to you this is my time to attack so do you think that David is now going to be in danger of losing that position or do you think that he can still defend it because of the nature of the track tonight um, well it, it has been a bit uh, back and forth here for the uh, last couple of laps, uh, and da David has uh, put some pressure on on uh, Yari, and uh, and then he lost some ground, and Mike is coming up from behind. But uh, uh, I think Mike, Mike is just uh, waiting to see if there will be any mistakes and letting uh, David uh, uh, try to pass Yari, or maybe maybe even uh, he he's wishing for a little collision, uh, and he won't do <laughs> much of a work at all and just uh, pass off to. And uh, while, while I'm at it, uh, there are some really bad news for flat out. Uh, Mike Schumann has uh, ended the race just uh, a lap ago, probably with a disconnection. Yeah, that is a shame. I mean, especially when you consider that every driver on the grid tonight will have put in hours of practice. They would have worked on their setup, they would have worked on their strategy for the race, and they'd have entered the race knowing that it's, again, not, not just themselves that they're racing for, they're racing for their teams. And 
after tonight's round, there's only really three more races left of the Blue Cup, so any disconnections, any DNFs, any DNQs really can hurt a team in their race for the championship. Um, you mentioned that Mike Wrightson's probably just sitting there waiting to see whether or not David Garcia and Yari Zanari take each other off track. Now, to um, some of our newer viewers, they may think that that's a little bit cold, but um, it's part of racing. Um, if you can sit back and just wait for your opponents to make a mistake for you to capitalize on, why not? Um, whilst Yari Vinari is concentrating on defending from David Garcia and David's concentrating on trying to find that way past, they're both actually probably using up their tires a little harder. Mike's still just able to sit there and concentrate on his own line, concentrate on his own breaking point. And the fact that he's only half a second behind them means that, yes, if there's the slightest touch, if there's the slightest outbreaking maneuver that, that forces them to compromise their, their entry into a turn, Mike Wrightson could see himself making up two positions and then being on the back of Bjorn Ellison. We've talked a lot about the guys in 7th, 8th and 9th. Um, perhaps if we take a look up front to see how Vincent Stahl's doing for GMT DHR. He's um, leading the race by about 6 seconds over his teammate, um, Theo Bubacic, who is still in 2nd place. Theo seems to be in his own groove as well because he has a 3 second lead on Rami Kakula for Roaring Pipes Maniac who also has about three seconds on Kevin Clark, who's in fourth place for flat out. Bjorn Ellefson, who I believe this is his first race in the STC this season, um, is in fifth place, about one second behind Kevin Clark, um, with Yari Venari about three, four seconds behind Bjorn um, for the Roaring Pipes Maniac. David Garcia is still in a watching brief, trying to figure out a way to get past Yari Venari in seventh place, um, while Mike Wrightson is still holding his corner, still being patient in eighth place for DHR Fanatec. In ninth position, we have Thomas Brevick in the Corvette E6 GTR, and he's about two and a half, three seconds behind Mike Wrightson. However, 0.3 seconds behind Thomas Brevick sees Richard Dayton trying to get the Marcus Marcarelli uh, flat out, past Thomas Brevick and into the top ten. Brian Starr, who's Richard Dayton's teammate in the second flat out Marcus Marcarelli, is about five seconds shy of his teammate in 11th position. As we look at 12th position, um, Michael Herman for the Black Visor Motorsports team is about 12 seconds back of Brian Stark in 12th place. His teammate, Neil Gault, is a further 13 seconds down the track um, in the Spiker C8 for Black Visor Motorsports where we then find the first BMW M3 for Blue Flag Racing of Christoph Babich. He's about 2.2 minutes and 9 seconds off the lead. So I think we really have a, a race of two races at the moment. We have the guys in the top 10, top 12, and then we have the guys in 13th, 14th, 15th and 16th who are really just trying to get to the end of this race. Um, as I said, we're only... 26 minutes into the race, so there's still plenty of time for anything to happen. But um, Christophe Babiche, I know, will just be happy to be setting consistent times and to still be on the track because that BMW is a little bit of a beast to drive. Um, but behind Christophe, we have Ryan Mortimer for DHR Fanatec. He's in 15th place. Um, behind Ryan is Eckhart von Glan in 16th position. 17th place, Dirk Bertram for A&E Racing followed by his teammate Darren Gardner in 18th place. Jeremy Schrotting for Team GG is in 19th position. And in 9th position, Thomas Brevitt seems to be coming under intense pressure at the moment from Richard Dayton. Um, Andreas, how much are you wishing you were on the track tonight, or are you just happy to be out of it? Well, um, <laughs> I, I'm a racer, so I obviously want to race, but... Um, uh, as this is a team event, uh, you can't race every race, so um, I choose some, um, some of the races. Uh, I will uh, race the, the pro race here uh, next week, uh, so, <laughs> so, so I take this uh, sport race up. <clears throat> not, not only because uh, I, I, I want to race uh, the pro car, uh, uh, 
Well, of course I want to race in uh, the pro car. I don't like the Corvette at all. <laughs> That's the reason. <laughs> I don't blame you. Um, I mean, in blue flag racing, we drive the BMW in Sport, and we drive the Aston Martin in GT Pro. Um, and if I had a choice, 10 days out of 10 days, I would sit behind the wheel of the Aston Martin because it gives me a much better feel for the track. Um, and if ever I have the opportunity to avoid driving the BMW, unfortunately, I would take it. You made an interesting comment, again, as you said, about this being a team event, so it's not necessarily about what you do or don't want to do. Um, would now be a good time to fill me in on what I missed last week, where you and your teammates tried to help each other across the line. Is, 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 is that correct? Why have I misread that situation? Uh, no, that's, uh, that's uh, correct. Um, uh, me and Mikael, uh, Helen, my teammate uh, in the pro race at Donington, uh, we were lying in uh, ninth and uh, tenth, I think it was, and uh, I was ahead of him, uh, ahead of him at the time, and uh, uh, I told him to, to pass me because he seemed a little bit faster. Uh, I let him pass, and then uh, a lap or two later, entering the last lap, uh, he told me uh, he was running out of fuel. <laughs> so basically, he, he, I had to push him over the line uh, off the last lap. Um, uh, there weren't any real danger from behind, though. Uh, I think it was one or maybe two laps to the nearest guy. But uh, uh, the racer in me t <laughs> took over, and and we and I pushed the car over the line, and we, we finished ninth and tenth. <laughs> so that's a, a bit uh, funny way to, to end the race. That's fantastic. Um, I leave town for one week. I come back, and the sim racing team challenge has taken teamwork to to new levels. Um, uh, again, a, a fantastic. Um, um, example of it being about the team and not about the individual, um, it kind of reminds me of Nigel Mansell trying to push his car over the line and, and then finally realizing that it didn't matter. If the car didn't cross the line under its own power, it couldn't then be placed in the points. So um, what was the outcome? Um, if, if Mikhail didn't cross the line under his own power, um, did he still finish in the points or was it a case that he was disqualified from that race? Um, <laughs> uh, sorry, I didn't hear it correctly. Can you repeat? Um, yeah. Um, what was the outcome of, of, of pushing your teammate across the line? Did he did he still manage to finish the race? Did he still score points, or was it a case of all of that effort for no gain? Well, uh, as you know, about there there is a, a war system where every team spokesman can uh, put their view on. Uh, on, on things like this, and uh, there, there were a poll uh, in the forums uh, about the situation because uh, at the moment when uh, when we did it, uh, we had no idea it may, might be considered as uh, cheating or or yeah bad basically. But um, uh, we 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 managed to keep the positions, <laughs> which we are happy about. Yeah, you mentioned the war system, um, and for. People who are, are unaware of what that system is, um, it's where in the Sim Racing Team Challenge, each of the teams have an equal say in the way that the championship is run. So in the rules that the championship is run to, any changes, each team is able to get their views across. And then, as you said, for situations like last week, um, there's a potential to vote. Um, I wish, I think that the Formula 1 teams nowadays would wish to have a situation that was similar where they could actually all get into a room and then just vote. Um, STC seems to have a situation um, where it works quite amicably. All of the teams get their views across. All of the teams get to feel as though they contribute to the championship. So there can be no bad blood. Um, and I'm glad that the teams saw your efforts last week as a sporting endeavour rather than anything malicious. Um, and I'm glad you kept the point. Um, coming back to tonight's race, it appears that um, David Garcia, um, Yari Benari and Mike Wrightson fighting over positions 5th, 6th and 7th have decided to resume their battles. 
Um, these guys have been separated by less than a second for the last 21 laps. They've been racing non-stop for 32 minutes, and they've not given each other a single second to breathe. Um, I think that we saw Jeremy Trotting take to the kitty litter um, a few moments ago, which is unfortunate because he's, he's in his home race. So the Team GG driver, um, I'm quite sure, would like to get to the end of this race without any eventful happenings um, and would just like to bring some points home. So hopefully he can re recompose himself, he can get back to setting some... Some, some consecutive times and some competitive times um, and make up some of that ground in the next 60 minutes of the race. Um, we're riding along with Mike Wrightson at the moment for DHR Fanatec and as I said, Mike finds himself embroiled in the fiercest battle on track. Um, there really aren't any cars on track that are closer than the three guys fighting over 5th, 6th and 7th. Um, it's amazing and it's a testament to their skill levels, their concentration and their stamina that they're still so close after 22 laps. Um, we haven't had a single bump, we haven't had a single crash and I don't want to jinx it or anything like that but the camera footage is showing just how close you can get and how tightly you can race with the guy in front when you trust him, when you believe that he's going to give you space and that he's going to see you coming and that that any move you make is going to be respected. And I think, again, that, that comes from the culture that we have in the STC, and that's what draws the teams to the STC. It's all about the fact that you can come and race clean. Um, you can avoid any of those public servants where you're not quite sure what's going to happen when you get within two car lengths of somebody. We see them going through turns one, two, and three, and Mike Wrightson is able to place his car right inside the rear quarter panel of Yari Gnari, knowing that he's not going to close the door on him. Um, that little move, though, has given David Garcia about a six-tenth gap to breathe. I mean, that six-tenths of a second, that's absolutely nothing. Um, hopefully, Mike Wrightson can make the move, um, because I think it'll just spice up the night, because if Yari Gnari does drop a position, it'll be interesting to see how quickly he can regain it. Um, Andreas, you remarked earlier that the track is so tight, it's so twisty, and it flows so much, that passing is actually going to be quite a challenge. Um, do you see anything going on on track that's going to alter that view? Um, well, it's obviously not impossible to pass. We have um, had a couple of passes. Uh, I think Jeremy passed Cam uh, uh, before. But I think Cam Clark is passing back, uh, at least uh, according to the live timing. And uh, David Garcia passed uh, post Eliminari. And um, yeah, it's possible. And but, but you really need to commit to the pass. Uh, not a single hesitation. But then you might hit him or break you late or something like that. Yeah, because we saw um, Mike Wrightson in the modeler. Um, he, he seemed to have the perfect slipstream going down the straight, um, chasing Yari Gennari across the line. Um, he got to within, I don't know, inches of the rear bumper, but he just didn't seem to have the confidence to pull out of the slipstream to make the pass. Now, I don't know if that's because uh, the Mosler is down on power on the Sun Red or if he's running a higher rear wing or anything like that, but we've seen this before in the STC. We've seen where one car just doesn't quite have enough of an advantage over another, so it's quite evenly balanced out. Um, with the flowing corners that we've got at Dijon, we don't really have a nice hairpin. We don't have a 90 degree turn. So there isn't a position for a driver to just chuck the car up the inside. I mean, as they come round turn eight to again start another lap, Mike Wrightson again is right up behind Yari Vinari. They're really, to talk about the gap in seconds would be futile. He's so close, he could get in the car with Yari. And now as he takes a look into turn one, it'll be interesting to see whether or not he has the confidence to put the car up the inside. And yet again, he doesn't. I mean, by the time he gets to the end of this race, he's going to be able to count the hairs on the back of Yari's neck. Um, and I'm just wondering how long he can keep doing this, how many laps he can follow him less than half a second behind him before his patience does start to wear thin. Because this is an endurance race, but behind the wheel we have 
racing drivers and they, they may not be driving real cars but that same adrenaline rush, that purple mist that can come down and descend on a driver can happen at any time. And I'm just wondering if during tonight's race we may see a little bit of impatience. Um, so far there's been a lot of respect, so far there's been a lot of composure but I'm just wondering how long can you follow someone this closely without thinking now, I'll make a move now. I mean, we just saw Yari again go all the way over the rumble strips, but because of the speed through turn eight, and because of the line he took, he hasn't lost anything. And I'm just wondering now whether or not these drivers are going to just hold station and think, pit stop. I'll get him in the pit stop. I mean, do you know what the sort of projections are from your team about what laps they'll be pitting on? Uh, no, I haven't heard anything actually, but... Uh I think as, as usual around 45 minutes uh, halfway through the race uh, it's time to to get into in the pits. I wouldn't be surprised though if, uh, if David pits a, a bit early um, to, to maybe get the, some laps on fresh rubber while the others uh, the other ones are skating around the track. Um, that might be one way to pull out the gap on the guys behind. But uh, yeah, yeah, right. 45 minutes. Sorry, Andreas. Yeah, you're right. I mean, at the moment, um, Yari and um, Mike were, were doing David a favor because he had a little bit of a gap, and so he'd be able to just concentrate on his own lines. He'd be able to just concentrate on, on his own lap times. But um, perhaps it might not be David that will think, maybe I need to pit earlier. It might be Yari or Mike would be better off taking themselves out of this fight because, as, as I said, they're they're wearing out their tires, so perhaps what one of them might consider doing is pitting early, taking themselves out of the fight, and then just going into a nice gap in the traffic and setting their own lap time. I mean, again, we've got a great slipstream down the straight um, from David as he's passed one of the back markers, and he's just screamed past in the Corvette. Now, Mike will be looking at the back of Yari thinking, why can't I do that? What do I have to do with this Mosler to get, get the speed out of it? I mean, many drivers have mentioned how their cars handle, whether or not they, they, they've got better downforce, whether they've got a better straight line speed, but the Corvette just seems to be quite supreme. I mean, I haven't spent any time behind the wheel of the Corvette. Um, have, have you, Andreas? What are the characteristics of it? Um, well, for me, it doesn't work at all to drive. Uh, it, it understeers into the corners and uh, it, it's just a bit too much power out of the corners. Uh, I might not be the right guy to 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 say exactly how it is because I am a quite uh, aggressive driver and uh, I usually warm up my tires <laughs> in 15 laps. But uh, <laughs> with this car, I wear it out in like 10 laps maybe. <laughs> that's that's why I I refuse to drive it. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it, it seems to have the tendencies when you look at it on track of a typical American muscle car, all grunt and no connect. But um, some of the drivers out there seem to be able to just finely tune their setup and finely tune their driving style to somehow maximize performance out of it. And like you, I, I avoid it like the plague. Um, I just wish one day to develop the, the, the skill, the technique to actually maximize the performance out of it. But enough about me, let's talk about our race leader who we're riding along with, Vincent Stahl. Um, but again, as I say, this, this is my first time viewing Vincent. Um, he's another driver to come through the GMT DHR stable. Um, and he's doing a fantastic job. He's 28 laps into this race. He's got 13 seconds on his teammate, Theo Ubicic, in second place. And he doesn't appear to have a care in the world. Um, He's taken the Marcus Marcarelli, which many people say is a middle-of-the-road car. It's, it's got okay handling, it's got okay downforce, and it's okay in a straight line. But they wouldn't necessarily say that it's one of the best cars on the grid in any particular characteristic. However, Vincent doesn't appear to have got that message because he's going along at a supreme rate of 1 minute 19 seconds on his last lap which is a second faster than his teammate Theo Wubicic. So um, I just need to check with one of our pit lane reporters who has a little info to tell me. One moment.
Uh, oh, sorry for taking so long, my, uh, Mark. Uh, but uh, there, there has been a couple of, uh, of pit stops uh, already. Uh, one, I think, was uh, Thomas Brevitz, who made actually a quite an uh, early pit stop. And uh, I think he might be going for a two-stopper. And then we have uh, Brian Stark for uh, for Fat Out Junior and uh, Neil Gold for uh, the Black uh, Vice Motorsports. They have both uh, also made a pit stop uh, quite recently, so one stopper for those. And um, yeah, uh, as far as I know, th those are the only ones that has uh, that have done a pit stop. Yeah, but um, as you predicted earlier on in the race, that pit stops should happen around the 45-minute mark. Um, we're, we're 43 minutes into the race, so those stops may be a little early, but it could well be that um, they're the short stint of, uh, of, of a, a one-stop, um, because if they're going to go for a two-stop, um, they probably still have um, quite some way to go on their last stop. But... Um, Thank you for pointing that out to us because um, I missed that completely. Um, what I think happened on track, though, was that Mike Wrightson, whilst we were looking at those, that pit stop information, appears to have finally made the move on Yari Venari. If um, live timing is correct, he's now up into sixth, whilst Yari's in seventh. And I think that whilst we're sitting in the grid with David Garcia, we're about to see the cavalcade of cars come steaming into the pit lane because um, now we're going to find out who's doing the one stop, who's doing the two stop, and we're going to find out whether or not David Garcia leaving the field of battle is going to allow Mike Wrightson now to capitalise on that move he made. I mean, what a perfect time to do it as well. Um, just as David Garcia was going to make his pit stop, Mike Wrightson finally gets past Jari Venari. And if we wanted to have an idea about which of those two drivers had the upper hand, it appears that the DHR Fanatec driver had a little in reserve because whether or not it's been getting past back markers or avoiding cars going into the pit lane out of turn eight, Mike Wrightson has managed to pull out three to four seconds on Yari Venari in the two laps. So Mike Wrightson seems to have got the wake-up call. He's, he, he, he may well also be about to pit, but he seems to be taking this opportunity to steal a march on Yari Venari. Uh, as we are talking about pit stop, uh, we have Michael Herman f uh, for uh, the Black Visers in the pits, and he's missing a, a rear wing, so he must have been off track. And we also have Christopher Babish for uh, the Blue Flag Racing in the pits for uh, for a regular stop, I think. But uh, uh, as I said, Herman has uh, probably been well. He must have been <laughs> hitting the wall somewhere around the track, so he's trying to fix the car, obviously. heard from one of our on-track reporters that Michael Herman, the Black Pfizer motorsports driver, um, appears to have lost his rear wing. So um, Michael's sitting in the pits at the moment. It looks like a pretty um, long stop as well because it's not easy to reattach the rear spoiler on one of these GT sports cars. Um, Christoph Babiche for Blue Flag Racing also appears to have made his pit stop. Um, so the live timing is going a little bit mad at the moment as drivers go in and out of the pit lane. Um, what we're also seeing though is as they come out on their fresh rubber, a lot of the drivers are setting their half this lap of the race. As we look at position 8, Thomas Brevitt in the Corvette C6 um, is in the middle of the new um, tight battle on track. Um, again, we're looking at drivers who are following each other with less than half a second between them. Um, and it appears that Bjorn Ellison in position 7 and our old friend David Garcia and Thomas Brevitz in 9 are about to start trading paint on 7th, 8th and 9th. Um, and we're 47 minutes into this race. 47 minutes into this race, a lot of these drivers have just made their pit stops. And yet again, they've come out on track to find their path blocked by another driver who's less than a second up the road from them. Yari Venari, who now finds himself in position four, is now going to have to put up with the attentions of Richard Dayton in the Marcus Marcarelli flat out. Um, Yari seems to either be a pit stop or Richard Dayton has just passed him um, because 
Yari just set a 1 minute 20.7 and Richard Dayton set a 1 minute 20.389 so unless Yari is going into the pits he has just lost the position to Richard Dayton the flat out driver and that's wonderful uh, uh, actually the the guys are now uh, pitting in and uh, both the RPM driver as well as uh, Tio Bubicic is in the pits at the moment so uh, a lot of pit action so there's a lot of action going on at the moment um, we as as my co-commentator Andreas Hawking predicted we got to 40 Three forty-five minutes into this race, and everybody decides to get gas and boot. Um, and as the cars tumble in and out of the pits, the on-track action is getting a little bit chaotic. So at the moment, we have Mike Wrightson leading the race for DHR Fanatec, followed by Richard Dayton um, in the Marcus Marcarelli for Flat Out. Vincent Stahl, who is actually our race leader, but at the moment, due to his pit stop, is now in third position. Followed by Bjorn Ellefsen um, in fourth position. David Garcia is in fifth position. Thomas Brevitt finds himself currently in sixth position. Rami Kalkula for the Roaring Pipes Maniac finds himself at the moment in seventh. Theo Bubashik, who was in second place after his pit stop, finds himself in eighth position for GMT DHR. Yari Venari, driving for Roaring Pipes Maniacs, finds himself in ninth position and rounding out the top ten at the moment is Brian Stark for Flat Out. now is in the pit lane so Mike's made his first stop of the race which means we'll see him now drop out of the fourth position he was holding we're going to see all the drivers in third fourth fifth pass him it depends on how long he has to remain stationary to change tires and take on fuel we may see Mike come out mm, either just in front of Yari Vinari or just behind him it really depends on whether or not he was able to make up any more time on his in-lap because we saw him pull out that three-second lead on Yari Venari. Um, so it depends on whether or not Yari Venari was able to return the favour once he got new rubber. Um, at the moment, it appears that Mike Wrightson may have made it out of the pit in eighth position and still maintained his lead, but only just over Yari Venari. As soon as the live timing um, settles itself down, um, we'll see if we can get Jose to take us to that action. At the moment, we're following Rami Kukula in 6th, who's followed by Theo Rubicic in 7th for GMT DHR. And Mike Wrightson, yep, as we thought, is in 8th position. And that little spurt that he put on to get himself 8 in front of Yari Vinari and then about 2-3 seconds down the track has really paid dividends. Because we saw that he was right on the tail of Yari. He was on his tail for quite a few laps and we wondered whether or not he'd find a way past him or would have to wait until the pit stop. Well, Mike actually fought his way past on track, and that may well be the one move of this entire race that he's going to look back on as the defining moment, because now he finds himself in front of Yari on fresh rubber, and if he's able to pull out that gap that we saw him do just before the pit stop, he may well now be able to get himself on turn with Theo Ruchik because Theo is only five seconds up the track. Um, as we talk him though, Vincent Stahl, not wanting to be um, upstaged by anyone tonight, has just set the race's fastest lap on a 1 minute 17.386. That 1 minute 17.386 has just been usurped by Vincent again, who has now decided to put on a real charge because he's shaved the tenth of it and put in a 1 minute 17.250. That lap time is 1.7 seconds faster than our current second place driver, Bjorn Ellefsen, um, and David Garcia in third place, 
um, is also about one second slower. So Vincent Stall, as we said earlier, is really in a class of his own, and it seems, Andreas, that every time we turn up at a track in the STC, there is one driver who just seems to be in a completely different league to everybody else on the track. Um, what is it that they have? How is it that they're able to just become one with car and one with track and just put the rest of us in the shade so much? What's the secret? <laughs> I wish I knew. <laughs> well, maybe uh, every driver has uh, a track for his own. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that's uh, the track he goes for from <laughs> now, but uh, I actually don't know. Uh, but uh, I'm not surprised to have a GMT DHR driver at the top. Uh, they always uh, are at the top of the, of the of the list, so to speak. And, uh, and yeah, Vincent Stoll remains to put uh, tip on your memory, I think. Yeah, I mean, whether it's GMT, DHR, whether it's the Roaring Pipes, um, these top teams just seem to have an endless stream of drivers they're able to tap into who are just unbelievably talented. I mean, just when you think you've put in 200 hours and found half a second, you turn up at the track and they find two. Um, it could be quite depressing for the other drivers on track, but if Vincent can carry on at this rate, as we said earlier, he should find himself in a situation where he's peerless in this race, where there's nobody that can touch him. At the moment, the driver who's worrying about getting touched is Thomas Brevitz in fourth position. He has Rami Kalkula breathing down his neck. Rami is less than, less than a tenth behind him. Um, it's another one of those situations where this driver is deciding, I need to make the move. If I don't make the move now, it's not going to happen at all in this race. So I believe if we just go to the action that Rami Kalkula has decided that catching up to the driver and waiting around to make the move is not his style. So he's caught up to Thomas and he's breezed straight past him. So Rami Kalkula in the Roaring Pipe Maniac takes himself back up into fourth position and is now going to go in hunt of David Garcia. David Garcia, who quite stealthily has moved himself into third position. Um, and that's quite, quite um, some progress that he's made this race because Theo Bubicic has found himself, after the pit stops, down in sixth. Now, unless we have drivers who haven't stopped yet, and I don't think we have, Theo seems to be the one driver who really lost out in that pit stop. I mean, it's something we saw earlier on this season with Christian Harbour at the A1 ring, where he stopped for tyres and came out in the wet on slicks. Um, ever so often we see one of these teams and one of these peerless drivers go into the pit stop and then be let down by either their crew chief or someone fixing the tyre. Um, Andreas, do you have any information on what possibly could have happened to Theo? Uh, no, I have no idea, but maybe. It's, uh, as I said before, uh, he, he made a quite uh, late pit stop uh, compared to the other guys, and uh, maybe w that's uh, what he lost, uh, lost on ground on. Uh, he, he might as well uh, take it back at the end of the race, though, as, uh, as the tires of the others uh, will be quite worn. Yeah, let's hope he does. Maybe, maybe you're right. Maybe what we're seeing is an interesting tactic from CO because um, it was quite evident he wasn't going to catch up to his teammate. Um, he, he, he's not racing for the race wing at the moment if he stays on the same conventional pit stop strategy as Vincent. So perhaps you're right. Perhaps he's decided to go long. Perhaps he's decided that by changing out of the same sink as his teammate, by going on to do something completely different, as you said, maybe at the end of the race, when the other drivers are nursing home their cars on warm tyres, he may make a stop come out with fresh rubber and do something surprising. As it stands, he's in sixth position. He's about six seconds off Thomas Brevitz. Um, and he's pretty much lapping about two seconds a second slower than his teammate. So Theo's race has turned into a really interesting one tonight. Perhaps that's one that we should continue to watch. Um, as we run down through the order, we see that John Ellison is enjoying his second place position as he crosses the line and heads into turn one. Um, he's about 12 seconds behind Vincent Stahl, um, and on his last lap, he was about three seconds slower. So Bjorn Ellison isn't necessarily 
going to trouble Vincent for the win, but if he can continue to set competitive lap times, if he can continue to maintain that consistency that the drivers were talking about, he may well find himself finishing on the podium. David Garcia is in the same situation as we see him in third position. He also is setting relatively competitive times, consistent times. Then nothing to trouble Vincent Stahl, but again, if he continues to maintain his consistency, we may find that the nine seconds he has on Rami Kakula are enough to hold on to the last podium place before we cross the start-finish line for the final time. Um, Rami Kakula, though, may have something else to say about that. Um, he's now only about five seconds off David Garcia as they go through the Parabolica. Um, and that sun red, as we know, it may well be a little switchy, but on a track like this where you've got a lot of switching backwards and forwards and you're shifting the weight of the car, that instability may actually serve him well. Thomas Brevitz in fifth place um, is about four seconds behind Rami Kakula, um, and he's having a good race tonight. Um, he's quietly getting on with his job. Um, he's staying out of trouble. He's extending the gap he has over Theo Bubicic to three seconds, four seconds as the laps go on. His last lap, I don't know if he had to pass the back marker, but he gave up 1.4 seconds to Theo. So he doesn't want to continue doing that because what he might end up doing is giving Theo something to aim for. Mike Wrightson is in seventh position in the DHR Fanatec. Um, and he's, again, he's, he's still having to fight off the attentions of Yari Denari. And I was wondering earlier if he'd be able to put in that two second, three second gap he did on the old tyres once they were both on fresh tyres. And it doesn't appear to be the case. They've now switched positions and it's Yari Benari who's now holding him to a second gap. And he's probably considering where he can catch up to him and return the favour later on in this race. Brian Stark for flat out is in ninth position. Neil Gort for the Black Pfizer Motorsport is currently in 10th position. Richard Dayton for Blackout is rising in 11th. Eckhart von Glan, the guy who you would normally be listening to, is heading up his teammate Christoph Babiche for Blue Flag Racing. They're in 12th and 13th positions. We've got Darren Gardner for A&E Racing in 14th position. And then Jeremy Trottin for Team GG. And again, this is Team GG's race. Um, and we really have to thank them. They picked a fantastic track to bring into this year's Blue Cup. I haven't heard a single driver complain about um, Dijon. Um, whereas we've seen that when we went to some of the other tracks, some of us couldn't quite get on terms with them. So we had a lot to say about them. Um, Michael Herman is our current 16th place driver for Black Visor Most Sports, and he's currently the last car running as we've lost Dave Nichol um, early on in the race. Um, we've lost a couple of drivers who've left the server as well, so we're now down to just 16 cars running, which is quite good considering we're 60 minutes into this race. Um, Rami Kakula Sorry, guys. Is now uh, we have uh, we have David Garcia in uh, in second position and uh, not sure what happened to yeah just the as I've been informed um, Bjorn Ellefsen has either left the track or is having an issue because he's no longer in second place he's now currently down in eighth position which has promoted David Garcia into second and Rami Kakula into the last podium position so Jose do you think we can move through the grid and pick up um, Bjorn to see whether he had an off track moment or if he's still running uh, Mark actually uh, Bjorn was in uh, in the pits uh, now I'm not sure if he pitted uh, before or if uh, this was his first pit stop, but uh, it might as well be be a second pit stop because, uh, uh, as I said earlier, the the Corvette is is a real pain to to drive, especially on the tires. And uh, and I think uh, Thomas Brevitz also made an early pit stop, and he might as well be in for a second one. So the DMS. Uh, Virtual cars uh, might be going for a two-stopper. Well spotted, and thank you very much. Um, that would explain a lot because um, Bjorn was quite surprisingly elevated all of a sudden into second position um, when all the pit stop action took place. So again, if this is another driver who's decided that he's not going to stay on the one-stop strategy that everyone else is running, he's trying something a little different. At the moment, it finds him in eighth position, um, and we'll see whether or not, if he is doing a two-stop, 
his fresher rubber um, actually served him well during the rest of the race. Um, at the moment, then, that means that Vincent Stahl has a 40-second lead on David Garcia in second place. That's a monumental gap. Um, unless something falls off that um, GMT DHR, uh, Marcos Marcarelli, um, Vincent Stahl can pretty much stop get a cup of tea and rejoin the track at this rate. He's really putting on a master car. His lap has been consistent faster than anybody else. David Garcia, though, has been impressive in this race. He really, he really can be proud of the fact that he's now got the Corvette C6 up into second position. Um, Thomas Brevitz appears to be making a pit stop, um, so we can just have a look and see where he comes out. Uh, yeah, Mark, just as I said before, uh, Thomas Brevitz making a pit stop, so he's definitely going for a two-stopper. Uh, a, a bit sad, uh, because uh, Theo uh, Bubicic uh, was right up behind him, um, and uh, a great battle was about to, to occur, but um, yeah, Theo, Theo now up to fourth, and uh, Brevitz now in P8, uh, might as well lose a couple of more places. Yeah, Andreas, you're right. That's a bit of a shame because um, whereas earlier on in the race we were quite spoiled over the number of battles we had with cars less than a second together, um, that did look as though it was going to be our closest battle on track for, um, for the time being. Um, so it's a shame that Thomas has had to pit. Um, but again, we'll, we'll see whether or not his interesting pit stop strategy um, works out for him tonight. Um, me, for one, I'm glad to see some different strategies going on because normally we see everybody do a one-stop. Everybody go in at the same time and everybody come out at the same time. So some of these teams are probably thinking um, we need to do something different to make up some ground in the championship table. Um, and perhaps doing a different pit stop strategy is the, the best weapon they've got to overcome some of these faster, more powerful teams. I mean... GMT DHR and Roaring Pipes are really battling out for the lead of the championship, but that doesn't mean that your Blue Flag Racing, your Black Flies Motorsports, um, or your Flat Out Club Racers are trying to get themselves as far up the championship table as possible. Um, Vincent Stahl is still setting the standard as we go around, but maybe we should do one of your famous grid, grid walks, Jose. What do you say? Yeah, of course. Let's see what's happening uh, apart from the from the top of the of the grid. Okay, so we know that Vincent Stahl is in first, David Garcia is in second, Rami Kerkula is in third position, followed by Theo Bubacic, who is in a much healthier position than he was four laps ago. Theo is followed three seconds in arrears with by Mike Wrightson for DHR Fanatec. Sixth position is Yari Vinari. Um, he's about two seconds behind Mike. Bjorn Ellefson, um finds himself in seventh position now as he turns through turn eight. Um, we have Neil Gort in position eight for Black Lives Motorsports, followed by Thomas Revitz. Brian Stark for Flat Out and the Marcus Marcarelli is in tenth position. We then have Richard Dayton, Brian's teammate, in eleventh position. Closely followed by Christoph Babiche. When I say closely, he's about a minute behind him. Um, so Christoph won't appreciate me saying that, but he's in a very healthy 12th position um, for Blue Flag Racing. Darren Gardner for A&E Racing is in 13th position. And he's followed by Eckhart von Glan for Blue Flag Racing also. And Eckhart's only about seven seven seconds behind Darren Gartner, so that may turn out to be our closest battle in some, um, some, some few laps. Eckhart is followed by Jeremy Schrotting for Team GG, um, and then again, as we said, our last runner on the track tonight in 16th position is Michael Herman for Black Visor Motorsport. Jeremy is just about to come into the pits, so we'll see where, whether or not this is just a, a, a routine stop or whether he has any problems with the car. Um, as it stands, he's the lone Team GG driver on the track, so all of Team GG's hopes 
and rest with Jeremy. So we, we, we pray that he has no issues with the car, that he can rejoin the track and at least bring the car home. Um, because in the STC, it's all about bringing the car home. It's not about winning the race. Um, unless, of course, you're Vincent Stahl, and then it's all about winning the race for your team and not necessarily bringing the car home. David Garcia, in second position, has the gap down to about 35 seconds. So with about 22 minutes left of this race, um, I wonder whether or not David is thinking, hold on to second place, or see if I can cut into Vincent's lead. What do you think, Andreas? Uh, I think he, he will uh, try to get second. 40, 46 seconds up to Vincent is, uh, is a bit much, uh, even for David. <laughs> So, yeah, I think he will, he will uh, try to get second, but it will be tough because uh, Rami Kakula is, uh, is really gaining on, on him at the moment. Yeah, um, as you say, Kakula did a 118.9 on that last turnaround, and Daddy did a 119.447, so he gave up half a second. Um, he may be 35, 34 seconds off Vincent at the moment, but... Um, 35 seconds is a lot if we finish the race now, but if Vincent has any problems, um, then it means nothing. He hasn't crossed the line yet. So, David, you're right. He probably should just concentrate on bringing the car home, but um, he may not have quite given up on the win yet because Vincent could have any kind of trouble. He could come across a back marker. He could lose concentration. I doubt it very much, um, but he could also have some sort of technical problem with the Marcus Marcarelli. Um, I'm going to stop talking about technical problems with the car because all of us sim racers are a little bit superstitious um, and I would hate to do a Murray Walker and put the kiss of death on him. Um, Rami Kalkula, as you said in third position, also appears not quite to have given up on second position either. Um, he's pacing David Garcia at the moment. He's got the gap down to just under four seconds in the Roaring Pipes Maniac Sunred, and I think that possibly that is going to be our battle to watch for the rest of this race. See which one of those drivers can take the runner-up position. Tio Bubacic, though, shouldn't be ruled out. He is only nine seconds behind Ram Kakula in fourth position. And the GMT DHR driver, I I'm going to imagine, thinks there's a little bit of unfinished business in this race. He has 20 minutes left to get that second position back. Um, and at the moment, he really, he's, only, he's only going to make up, say, 20 seconds. Um, all he needs is for Rami Kapula to catch up with David Garcia and to pretty much distract him. Tio can then get his head down, put in some competitive and consistent laps, and then pretty much make the last 10 or 5 minutes of this race interesting. Mike Wrightson um, is still being followed closely by Yari Nari. They're still fighting over 5th position and 6th position. And by the time those two get to the end of this race, I think they'll be pretty much sick to the back seat of seeing each other. They've been so close on track all evening. Um, but again, as I said, it's a testament to their professionalism, their skills, and their, their clean driving, that they've not taken each other off, they've not crashed into each other, and they're, they're, they've really put on a show, and they're doing both of their teams proud. I mean, we're watching Vincent Stahl come around um, to complete another lap. He's, he's coming through um, serenely leaving this race. Um, he's lapping in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a 1 minute 18 second bracket that is not challenged by anyone else on track. Um, he's pretty much just lapping to set times to keep himself interested. Um, it'll be interesting to see at the end of the race whether or not the race has just been as easy for him as it appears, or whether he's been struggling with the car. Because I recall um, thinking that Christian Harbour was just cruising along when Christian was actually quite disappointed with the performance of the car. So it'll be interesting to see at the end of this race whether or not Vincent is finding this quite easy, or whether or not he's having to push hard to concentrate, having to push hard to keep the car on the track. Um, what would your thoughts be on that, Andreas? Well, uh, I think he's pretty happy, happy with his pace and, and the car. I would, I would have been, so I hope he is as well. 
I would definitely be happy with his pace. Um, someone else who will be happy with his pace, and I must be sure to give him a mention, is Eckhart von Glan. Um, Eckhart's currently in 13th position, racing for Blue Flag Racing, and he's just set his fastest lap of the race. Um, and I know that that will make Eckhart very happy, because Eckhart has pretty much been desperate all season long to get on track and be part of the action, rather than to just be commentating on it. I, for one, will be glad when Eckhart is able to take back this microphone and commentate, because he does a much better job of it than I can. But as it stands, perhaps, Jose, we can find Eckhart on track and give him a little bit of airtime. What do you say? Yeah, of course. Uh, in fact, we... Uh, I don't know if you remember, because it uh, was... Uh, time ago, but we made an onboard lap with him. But, okay, uh, yeah. Here it is again, Eckhart, or Eckhart. <laughs> Eckhart, this is just for you. When you finish the race, be sure to download the archive from TSR TV and watch this back at your leisure. So, just as we do that, I put the kiss of death on Eckhart, and he takes the uh-huh. kiss of death a little. Um, so, Eckhart, if you're watching this back on archive, it had nothing to do with Jose, it had nothing to do with Andreas, it was me that jinxed you. Um, so perhaps we should leave Eckhart alone, um, allow him to concentrate on his race, and allow him to bring that BMW home for blue flag racing. Um, we're coming into the last quarter of this race, though. We've got about 15 minutes left. Um, we currently have 15 cars on track. In position 9, we have now the closest battle on track, as Neil Gort for Black Visor Motorsports attempts to keep his Spiker C8 out of the reach of Richard Dayton. And just as we call it, Richard Dayton decided he wanted to take the position. Um, so Richard Dayton now takes the flat out Marcus Marcarelli up into position 9, and Neil Gort falls down to position 10 for Black Visor Motorsport. This is our closest battle on track at the moment, and considering these guys are 51 laps into this race, they've been racing for 1 hour and 15 minutes, to be separated by less than a second, again, is testimony to the standard of racing that we have in the Sim Racing Team Challenge. Um, And I know I keep mentioning it, but I think um, we really need to shout it from the rooftop. The guys that you have on track tonight um, are some of the fairest racers you could ever wish to race against. So if you ever see them on a public server, or if you see them on a forum, be sure to give them a shout out, because they're putting on a real show for us tonight. In P11, we see that Christoph Babish is now in moving up a position um, for Blue Flag Racing, as does Eckhart von Glan for Blue Flag Racing. I think that perhaps they just passed a car that went off track. I'll have to check the live timing, because ever so often it gives us information that's a little bit erroneous. Uh, Mark, actually, um, it was Brian Stark who, uh, for Flat Out Juniors who left the, who left the race, uh, probably with a disconnection or a badly, badly uh, crashed car or something like that. Uh, I didn't have time to, to see it properly. And while I'm at it, uh, also uh, Darren Gardner for a and Racing uh, left some laps ago. So uh, a couple of more uh, DNFs. And it's always a shame to have DNFs. I mean, this is endurance racing, and whether it's simulated endurance racing or real-life endurance racing, um, as we said, it's not about how fast you can go. It's about whether or not you can bring your car to the finish. And whilst those drivers will be distraught that their race has been ended by a technical glitch, unfortunately, that is just racing. Um, for us sim racers, it's losing an internet connection or having a power cut. Um, for a real racer, it's about blowing a motor or it's about having an oil leak. Um, so, whereas we had 15, 16 cars on track 10, 15 minutes ago, we're now unfortunately down to 14. However, that doesn't detract from the action on track, that doesn't detract from the entertainment we've had this evening. Um, and as we follow Vincent Stahl, who's about to put another lap on a back marker, um, who 
quite generously get that of this way. Um, we can see that we're, again, we have about 13 minutes left of this race, um, and Vincent is serenely about to bank some more points for the GMT DHR team. Um, and GMT DHR, I think, really have the upper hand in this race because they're in first and fourth at the moment, whereas Roaring Pipes are in third and sixth, Rami Kalkula and Yari Fenari respectively. So that battle that we had at the top of the championship table has a few more twists and turns to go. Um, Jose, do you think we should do a rundown from 1st through to 14th? Yeah, why not a fast one? Because uh, uh, I think the, um, the TBR Corvette has uh, tight problems. I already know that uh, we have some overheating in the, in the tires. So uh, Rami is getting closer, so we can we can do our our round down and then come back to see this battle in the last laps. Sounds like a plan. So if we start off with our race leader Vincent Stoll, who's taking the GMT DHR Marcus Marcarelli into the distance, he leads um, David Garcia by 49 seconds. Um, David Garcia um, leads Rami Kalkula by two seconds in third place. We have Tio Bubicic in fourth place for GMT DHR, a further nine seconds down the track. We then have Mike Wrightson for DHR Fanatec, driving the Mosler, who's about two seconds behind Tio Bubicic in fifth. Then Yari Venari, then the Sun Red Roaring Pipes Maniacs, a further three seconds behind Mike Wrightson in sixth. Bjorn Ellefson is in 7th position, followed by Thomas Rabbit, who's driving the Corvette C6 in 8th. Richard Dayton, the flat-out Marcus Marcarelli driver, finds himself in ninth position, followed by Neil Gault for Black Pfizer Motorsport in the Spiker C8. Christoph Babiche is in 11th position for Blue Flag Racing, followed by his team leader, Eckhart von Glan in 12th. We then have Jeremy Trotting in 13th position for Team Gigi, with Michael Herman, our last runner, in 14th position for Black Pfizer Motorsport. And as Jose says, our closest battle on track at the moment is for 2nd and 3rd position, where we see David Garcia valiantly fighting to hold on to 2nd position in this race. And it looks like we're going to have a repeat of the situation that we had earlier in the race, where catching up to a car and passing a car is quite a different matter at Jean Prenoir, because Rami Kalkula is just under a second behind David Garcia as they go into turn one. Um, but Rami Kalkula is going to have to find a way of getting that sun red behind the Corvette and then pass it. And one thing we know about the Corvette is that it has a lot of grunt, it has a lot of muscle. So when it comes to getting up and down the pitch straight, it's going to be quite difficult for Rami Kalkula to actually make the pass. Well, we can now see, uh, Mark, that uh, uh, Ram is really pushing hard. He, he can see, well, he has been, <laughs> been for a couple of laps now, but now we can see uh, that he's getting closer and closer, and it will make everything a lot easier. He can now start to, to drive in David's uh, line and, uh, and see where he is losing some time and uh, where he can gain some time. Yeah, you're right. Um, and it's very much like Eckhart was saying, um, the driver gets to the point where he can see the car in front. Um, as Rami Kapuda comes across the start-finish line, he can see David Garcia entering turn one. And it's that, that imaginary line, that imaginary rope that he can now throw out onto the rear wing and pretty much haul himself in. So as they make their way through the S's and then head into Bretel and the Parabolica, Rami Kapuda is going to be consciously seeing himself get closer. He's going to break that little bit later he's going to accelerate that a little bit harder and at the moment that two second gap that he has to david garcia is pretty much in his head 
all it will take is one backbarker, all it will take is one mistake from David, and if Jose is correct, and David is struggling with warm tyres or overheating tyres, Rami Kamkula could find himself snatched in second place by the end of this race. But we only have eight minutes left to run, and so all David has to do is place his car on the right line, um, without going off track, without trying anything too ambitious, because as we've seen all evening, um, closing up to a car to Jean Prenoir is one thing, um, passing is a completely different matter. Um, Theo Ubicic is pretty much having the same battle at the moment with Mike Wright, who was before from the fifth. Theo wants to hold on to four because that's four points for GMT DHR, whereas Mike Wrightson is thinking, no, I want that fourth place because DHR Fanatec could do the points as well. Yai Vinari um, seems to have been dropped a little by Mike Wrightson. He's now three and a half seconds behind him. Um, but that battle for second and third really just got interesting because I think the back mark was just enabled Rami Kakula to close up to under a second behind Gabby Garcia. And looking back off David's rear ring, we can see that the front red of the Roaring Pipe Maniac is hunting him down. You can pretty much see the concentration and, and the commitment that Rami has. He knows that this is his moment. There's no point in getting this close and then just sitting behind David for lap after lap. He has to close the gap and make the move, and we've seen Rami really, really struggling with the car. He's putting opposite lock on. <coughs> Excuse me. He's coming through the turn eight. The cars are now going to come down this long, long straight we have at Dijon. And, and again, we're going to have to see, does the Sunred have the brute force? Does it have the horsepower to haul in that Corvette C6 and make the move? Andreas, are you a betting man? Do you think that David will hold on to second, or do you think Rami has a chance? As a teammate to David, I, I have to think that he can hold on. <laughs> but uh, it, w it, w it will be difficult, that's for sure, because uh, uh, Rami is, is really on it now. But uh, as, uh, by the looks of it, his uh, tyres is also getting a bit worn, so maybe we will have a drift fest at the end of the race. <laughs> Team loyalties are nothing to be ashamed of. You, you cross your fingers for David as much as you want. <laughs> I would be doing exactly the same thing. And right now, David needs as much help as he possibly can get. I'm sure that the rest of the team are sat around monitors all over the world, praying that he can hold on, praying he can keep the car on the ideal line. Because at the moment, you can see Rami Kapula is trying different lines. He, he's taking tight lines. He's taking wider lines. He needs to do something. And basically at the moment he's not even trying to make the pass, what he's trying to do is be that busy bee buzzing around David's head. So every time he looks in his mirrors, every time he looks in his rear view mirror, all he can see is that boring pipe of sunset flashing around. And that's all it takes really, a little bit of a distraction. Because if David starts watching his mirrors more than he starts watching the road ahead, he could quite easily make a mistake. As they cross the line now to complete their 60th lap, they have less than five minutes left to go. Um, Vincent Stahl can pretty much put this one to bed. He, he's going to take this victory unless his, his car gives up the ghost. And I can't see that happening whatsoever. The fight between David and Rami Kalkula is making life interesting for the BMW following them. They're actually holding each other up. And we can see that Rami and David are pretty much almost side by side as they go through that past, that last turn. Um, so the adrenaline levels in both of those cars has definitely gone up a notch. Perhaps, as Jose, for next year's STC, we should fit each driver with a heart monitor. What do you think? Uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, I didn't understand. Uh, what do you say about the monitor? <laughs> I'm just thinking that at the moment we've got this intense battle um, for second and third between David Garcia and Rami Kalkula that potentially next year what we should do for the viewing public is fit each driver with a heart monitor um, just to see how hard their hearts are pumping in this last five minutes of the race. Yeah, that will be really cool, but... Uh well, I have to, to talk to, to Ayam from PSR TV <laughs> to see if he can uh, just travel to its driver's place and uh, put the, the sensor and then make all the software.
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you do that. You go and have the conversation with PSR TV. Tell them it makes for great racing. Not that we need any gimmicks or anything to, to have great racing. Because as we've seen with so many of the Sim Racing Team Challenge races this year, we have a show right up until the last lap of the race. Rami Kalkula right now is breathing so closely down David Garcia's back. He can probably hear him. Um, these guys have completed 62 torturous laps of this race. They've been given each other no quarter, not one opportunity whatsoever to take any rest time. And at this point in time, there is so much on the line because the gap between them as they went through the last timing point was 0.2 seconds. Ooh. Now David goes wide through turn 8 as they come down the straight. He's given Rami Kalkula that perfect opportunity. Now we're going to see which car has the speed, which car can get into turn one and take the line. Rami Shad should have it because he should just be able to put the block pass on. But David isn't giving up. And amazingly, the C6 outpowers the Sunred down the straight. David shows 100% commitment and turns in. Andreas, can you believe it? That looked like a definite pass for Rami Kalkuda. What went wrong? Uh, I thought he, he had lost it, David, and, uh, but apparently he braked a little bit later, uh, managed to, to uh, block pass him or <laughs> block pass him right back uh, without touching and uh, good driving from both sides. Uh, yeah, but uh, Rami pretty much had him there, but, but uh, maybe his, uh, his tires are really worn as well and he didn't uh, feel confident braking as late as David. Yeah, it could well be that he didn't feel as confident breaking as lay. It could well be that David Garcia just made the move of the race. And that took a lot of courage. That took a lot of confidence in the car, a lot of confidence in his ability as well. Rami Kalkula now obviously smells blood, though, and he's thinking, well, you went wide last lap. What can I make you do this lap? And as David goes defensive towards the pit lane, Rami Kalkula tries to keep the sun red in the slipstream. But... It may well be a combination of things. It may have been that little bit of extra horsepower from the Corvette. It may well have been also that he's running a lower rear wing. Or it could well be that Rami Kalkulo thought, hey, maybe it's better to give up this move and try on the next lap. Because again, part of this is it's all about the team. It's not about the driver. And if he took himself and David off with less than a minute left to go for this race, um, it wouldn't be the best thing for the Rory Punch Maniac and it wouldn't be the rest best thing for the Black Rebels either. So, my timing, timing screen tells me that we've done 90 minutes, so perhaps we should just have a look and see whether or not Vincent Stahl is about to complete his last lap of this race, and then Jose, perhaps we should come back and see if, oh, it looks like David Garcia has gone wide, and Rami Kalkula may have just taken the position for second place. Um, so, should we have a look and see whether or not Vincent Stahl is about to start his last lap? What do you say, Jose? Mm, yeah, we should ask uh, Andreas. Andreas, can you confirm if, he, if uh, this is the last lap? I didn't see the the white flag. Um, no, I I'm not really sure, but maybe we should stay with uh, Vincent uh, despite it. Well, whilst you guys check to see whether or not we're heading into last lap territory, um, the viewers and I will continue to watch this enthralling battle that we have for second position. Um, David Garcia is going to be seething behind the wheel because whether or not it's the characteristics of the Corvette or it's the tyres that have taken some punishment, that fantastic defensive move he put on into turn one has all of a sudden been for naught because Rami Kalkula has been able to pounce. Now what we'll have to look and see is whether or not David can return the favour, take the position back, or if the Roaring Pipes Maniacs driver can hold on to that second position. Vincent Stahl, as we see, now has a 60 second lead on second position. Um, he 100% is about to complete his final lap. So as we see him approach the Parabolica, he then has to go through turn five, Bretel, then through turn six. He'll then make his way through Virage, turn seven. Then he'll go through the Corbett de Pouar, turn eight. 
to cross the start finish line for the last time and bring down the checkered flag once again for GMT DHR. And we really, really have to stand up and applaud Vincent tonight because he has put on a masterclass. It's been uh, error free, it's been a dominant, and it's been an impressive performance. And GMT DHR deserve all the plaudits for what has been a fantastic performance. As we see Vincent do a little bit of a wiggle and a bunny hop, we then can take ourselves back to Rami Kalkula and David Garcia, who are about to fight out for the final time for second and third position. And again, as they make their way towards the Parabolica, we see that they're again getting into this side-by-side -side action. Rami Kalkula is currently holding on to second position. I think we just need um. to double check whether or not David Garcia had a wide moment and has dropped down into fourth because I think I yeah, can see Tio uh, he, he, he must have had some problems uh, on the last lap because he, he's out of the race probably wrong, uh, something wrong on the car or maybe on the wheel because he pulled to the side of the track and, uh, and his wheels went uh, from the right to left and back and forth so a real shame that is an absolutely disastrous turn of events for David Garcia. Um, guys, um, and uh, I, uh, you know the the problems we used to have with uh, because the the, the simulation uh, don't uh, um, don't give uh, accurate information about the the race end, but uh, maybe it can be that that the race is is over because the, there are more drivers. Um, out. Can we check that in uh, any way? Let's hope that that's the case because as it currently looks in the live timing, we would have Vincent Stahl winning the race, completing 67 laps, with Rami Kalkula in oh. second place, I, completing I 67 now, laps. It says here on my timing that uh, David ran out of fuel with half a lap to go. That is an unbelievable blow for the Black Rebels driver. Um, he was so close, he literally had to just complete the last lap, and he would have been at least guaranteed a third position, um, let alone still in the fight for a second place position. Um, perhaps we can get him into the green room and get his view on what actually happened in that race. Um, but again, um, congratulations to GMT DHR. They came, they took pole, and they took the victory. Um, once we tabulate all the numbers, we'll see what that has done to the final standings, what it will do for the championship. But um, Team GG, thank you very much for selecting Dijon Prenoir for tonight's race because it put on an absolute masterclass of a show. Um, Andreas, um, what would be your highlight of the race? Well, there were a lot of fighting, so that's good. Uh, I would consider all fighting <laughs> as uh, as the best parts. Um, obviously, I'm happy with the with the repassing of uh, Rami that David made. And well, the low lights must be that uh, none of uh, the TBR cars finished. But uh, yeah, uh, awesome performance as well by Vincent Stahl. Uh, really amazing. So, also that one uh, a highlight, and I think uh, Theo Bubicic uh, made up some ground after his pit stop, where he lost a lot of time. So, also a highlight. Yeah, pretty action-packed race. I mean, um, as you said, highlights and lowlights. Uh, the highest of the highlights being Vincent Stahl's dominating victory, um, and of course, um, I'm sure you want to find out where David is and speak to him and commiserate with him but um, let's not take anything away he put on an absolutely brilliant performance he, he brought his car up into third position took second position um, he put on an absolutely no holds barred courageous defensive move into the first turn to hold on to that second position um, running out of fuel um, it's endurance racing um, you, you, you cut things to the finest margins to try and and, 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 and steal a 
steal a march on your competitors and sometimes that does mean you can run out of fuel as you found in, in Donington last week. Um, the, the fortunate thing, or I suppose the saving grace, is that we had already lost some cars from the race. So although David didn't finish the race, um, he, we'll, we'll have to look and see where he finally lands in the standings because he wasn't lapped, of course. So he still may no. finish in the points somewhere. Yeah, I think he'll, um, he'll finish in, in sixth, actually. So it's still a pretty good result uh, at the end, but uh, it could have been so much more. And as you say, the, there were a couple of, well, a couple of, uh, quite many drivers uh, ending the race. What, uh, what might have been a lot of disconnections. Um, yeah, so that's a shame. But uh, hopefully, hopefully it will be better in the, in the pro race and in the last round as well. Yeah, well, because of course. Uh, um, sorry, now now time for the for the anthem uh, in the in honor of uh, GMT DHL that uh, won the race, and uh, then we can go to the to the interviews. Hello, hello, anybody at home? Nope, they've all left. Okay, Mark, uh, we have the, the podium finishers with us. Excellent, fantastic. Um, Rami, Theo, Vincent, welcome to the booth. Oh, thanks. Thank you. Vincent, if we could speak with you first. Um, first of all, um, congratulations on an absolutely dominating race. Um, could you talk us through it? Um, yeah, thanks. Um, just uh, qualifying, it's just one lap. Just went out early and had a pretty okay lap, which was pole position by quite a gap, I guess. So then the race, teammate on P2, so quite safe to take an early lead, I guess. And well, the pit stop went superb, and I could drive away again. No incidents, just a clean race. Yeah, um, it looked 
to to us um, like a nice serene drive into the distance. Obviously, it it, it, it wasn't that easy. Um, but was there at any point in the race where you thought you were going to be challenged, or did you just think, as long as I keep this on the island, I'm going to win? Um, but the gap after the stint one was quite big already, and when I came back after the pit stop. The lead was already over 30 seconds, I guess, so I could kind of cruise to the finish, but I still pushed a bit. <laughs> Almost spun in the last lap. Okay, um, so your idea of cruising um, is, is an unbelievable pace to the rest of us. Um, what's your secret? Um, is it just practice, 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 or is it just that innate talent that you have? Uh, I have no idea. Damien just asked me 30 minutes before the race if I, if I wanted to drive and well I was okay but just did a few laps yesterday and well went quite okay I guess. I think that's the epitome of understatement then so you, are you, were you uh, uh, a surprise entry for this race then for were you, were you not expecting to race tonight? Nope. I got some friends over and we're going out to party, so already had some beers, so. <laughs> That's excellent. So all those campaigns we see about drinking and driving, uh, we should ignore those for sim racing because uh, if you didn't... <laughs> <laughs> I've just had one or two. <laughs> but I think I deserve a few more now. <laughs> You deserve more than a few more because if that's that's the sort of performance you can put in with only a few laps practice um, and 30 minutes notice, then again my hat goes off to you. That was an absolutely dominant display. Um, Thanks. So Ramy. thank you. No, thank you, um, Rami. Um, if we could have a word from you, um, you, you finished second, um, but you had quite an interesting last 10, 20 minutes. Um, how was that for you? Yeah. It was a nice battle. I think Miss Davies' tire was quite worn out, so I was able to catch him and, and pass him a couple of weeks before the finish. So. Yeah, um, we also saw that, um, that there was one move about ooh, six, seven laps to go in the race where it looked like you had David down the straight. You were inside him going into turn one but he still managed to outbreak you around the outside. And could you talk us through that? Yes, I, I, I was thinking I can take him there, but he was a little bit taking some, maybe to, I don't know. <laughs> he, he was just able to make that. Okay. Um, ha have you heard yet um, what it was that caused him to... to not finish the race. I mean, are you aware that, that David actually appears to have run out of fuel on the last lap? Um, if you had known that, would you have fought so hard? Uh, uh, maybe not. If I know that he will be out of fuel. But, but, but I'm happy I, I did that pass. Yeah, no, you put in an absolutely um, breathtaking performance. So, um, on behalf of myself and all of the viewers, we thank you because um, it definitely made the last 10 minutes of the race um, enthralling viewing. Um, so thank you very much. Um, Tio, if we could just have a quick word with you. Um, thank you. How did your race go tonight? Tio, are you with us? Well, perhaps no, Tio's gone to get a few yeah. beers as well, since he deserves them as well. So, Jose, Andreas, do you have any um, questions for Vincent or Rami? Um, well, uh, uh, Rami, did, uh, did the pit stops go, uh, go as uh, well as, uh, as you aimed for? Or were there any problems? Oh, <clears throat> this time my pit uh, was okay. Nothing was a problem. Uh, it was good. Okay, and uh, and you, Vincent, any problems for you? Uh, maybe yes, left as well. <laughs> uh, maybe never mind your friendly all voices here. Uh, 
Ah, uh, Eckhart. Oh, good evening, Mr. Von Glenn. How are you this evening? Oh, good evening. I was just fine. Just uh, had a great race uh, in the back of the grid. Uh, some little problems at the start. Somebody kind of did a crash or something at the start. Uh, did you watch it in the rear? Uh, and we got that sorted out. And then I did a really stupid mistake on my own with nobody inside. I went into one of the walls, had to replace the splitter, and I think left 12 or 13. And uh, from then it was a great race, um, quite happy, did a PB in the qualification, and I think I ended up 12th um, of those remaining on the track, which is quite nice if you uh, have 22 cars at the beginning, and uh, then you end up 12th, uh, so I'm very, very, very happy. And my teammate went uh, to 11th, so great result for us. Yeah, um, and I have to say, um, you do a fantastic job on track and you do a fantastic job in this booth. Um, um, please tell me that you will be taking back your microphone next week. I will, I will. I guess uh, you did a perfect job too from what I hear here and I think I messed up the national anthem by going, <laughs> walking into the broadcast room and saying, anyone here? <laughs> I thought you were already off air, but uh, I think it was just so dead silent because it was the, the national anthem playing. So those of you who wondered who the noob was who went into the broadcast room, it was me. I was feeling like at home, but nobody was home. And I had a quick talk to David who is with us now. Um, David Garcia, what about that, that fuel problem you had? Yeah, good night. <laughs> well, it's uh, simply bad luck. Uh, maybe I was uh, wrong in the calculations I made <laughs> before the start of the race, and it was about uh, half a lap to reach the end. Uh, when I was out of wheel, it, it was really bad luck, but this is racing, and I guess. Yeah, David, and if you could also talk us through that, that fantastic defensive move you made on Rami as you entered turn one. Um, as, as, as we sat watching and all the viewers sat watching, it seemed a dead cert that Rami was going to pass you into turn one. How did you have the confidence to maintain that position? Well, uh, I think I made a, a good strategy today. The, the strategy we chose, it was the, I think it was the, the correct one, but... I know uh, there was faster people than me in, in the grid. <laughs> in fact, I was in P10 in the qualifying. So when I saw it, it, it was Rami, the one following me. I, I was really scared, and I was uh, pushing really hard. And my, my tires were get, get, getting worn really, really fast. And uh, when, when Rami was about uh, two seconds behind, uh, one second, it was like, like nothing. And it was uh, really difficult to, to keep him him behind. I don't know, uh, he had been a gentleman because uh, maybe he had uh, more options to overtake me, but he, he was uh, very kind and he was very respectful at the end, looking for, for me. <coughs> yeah, I was thinking of doing the Valentino Rossi move and, and pass you in the last corner. I, w I was thinking to do Valentino Rossi move and start to take the pass you in the last corner, but, but yeah. <laughs> that was nice battle. <laughs> yeah, it was nice, it was nice, and I think it, it was really deserved <laughs> you, your, your overtake on me because uh, I am really not on your skills, <laughs> I am really not on your times. I was really surprised to, to reach the final lap or the final two laps. Uh, in PP2, so I think y you really made a great race, Rami. Yeah, you too, thank you. Yeah, and we have to thank you all because I think we've been absolutely spoilt this evening. There was fantastic racing up and down the grid, so thank you, Rami, thank you, Theo, thank you, Vincent, thank you, David, thank you to everyone that was in the broadcast booth along with me as well, Andreas, Jose, um, thank you, Eckhart, for lending me your mic. Um, I would like to give it back. Um, and before we sign off for this evening, does anybody else have any last words? Nope. Bye-bye. <laughs> well, then, on behalf of the Game Hoster and Pro Sim Racing TV and, of course, Sim Racing Team Challenge, 
I'd like to thank you all for joining us this evening. We hope that we entertained you, and we hope to see you next week when the GT Pro Cars show us what they can do with Dijon Prenoir. So thank you very much. It's been a pleasure, and good night. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.